Introduction What are you doing, dear? I'm watering the plants. I forgot to water them yesterday and so they are appearing dry. You should know that plants are also living beings like us and they also require food and water for their survival. But how do the plants get them? They absorb nutrients and water from soil by various mechanisms. We will learn about such mechanisms in this module. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Discuss transport of water in plants Discuss various means of transport like diffusion, facilitated diffusion and active transport Compare different transport processes Explain plant water relations Understand water potential Describe osmosis plasmolysis and imbibition process. Transport of water in plants. Introduction. All plants need to move molecules over very long distances. They also do not have a circulatory system in place. Water taken up by the roots has to reach all parts of the plant up to the very tip of the growing stem. The photosynthates or food synthesized by the leaves have also to be moved to all parts including the root tips embedded deep inside the soil. In a flowering plant, the substances that would need to be transported are water, mineral nutrients, organic nutrients and plant growth regulators. Over small distances, substances move by diffusion and by cytoplasmic streaming supplemented by active transport. Transport over longer distances proceeds through the vascular system and is called translocation. You will be surprised to know that in rooted plants, transport in xylem is essentially unidirectional from roots to the stems. Organic and mineral nutrients, however, undergo multidirectional transport. Now we will learn about the means of transport for short distances in plants. Means of transport. Let us start with diffusion process. Diffusion is a slow process and is not dependent on a living system. In diffusion, molecules move in a random fashion, the net result being substances moving from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration. Movement by diffusion is passive and may be from one part of the cell to the other or from cell to cell or over short distances, say, from the intercellular spaces of the leaf to the outside. No energy expenditure takes place. Diffusion is very important to plants since it is the only means for gaseous movement within the plant body. Diffusion rates are affected by the gradient of concentration, the permeability of the membrane separating them, temperature and pressure. The diffusion rate depends on the size of the substances. Obviously, smaller substances diffuse faster. The diffusion of any substance across a membrane also depends on its solubility in lipids, the major constituent of the membrane. Membrane proteins provide sites at which some molecules cross the membrane. They do not set up a concentration gradient, a concentration gradient must already be present for molecules to diffuse even if facilitated by the proteins. This process is called facilitated diffusion. In facilitated diffusion, special proteins help move substances across membranes without expenditure of ATP energy. Facilitated diffusion is very specific. It allows cell to select substances for uptake. The proteins form channels in the membrane for molecules to pass through. Some channels are always open, others can be controlled. Some are large, allowing a variety of molecules to cross. The porins are proteins that form huge pores in the outer membranes of the plastids. Mitochondria and some bacteria allowing molecules up to the size of small proteins to pass through. In this process, an extracellular molecule 
bound to the transport protein. The transport protein then rotates and releases the molecule inside the cell. For example, water channels made up of eight different types of aquaporins. Some carrier or transport proteins allow diffusion only if two types of molecules move together. In a symport, both molecules cross the membrane in the same direction. In an antiport, they move in opposite directions. When a molecule moves across a membrane, independent of other molecules, the process is called uniport. Another mean of transport is active transport. Active transport uses energy in the form of ATP to pump molecules against a concentration gradient. Active transport is carried out by membrane proteins. Hence, different proteins in the membrane play a major role in both active as well as passive transport. Pump subproteins that use energy to carry substances across the cell membrane. These pumps can transport substances from a low concentration to a higher concentration or uphill transport. Transport rate reaches a maximum when all the protein transporters are being used or are saturated. Now, let us compare simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion and active transport. Plant water relations Water is essential for all physiological activities of the plant and also plays a very important role in all living organisms. It provides the medium in which most substances are dissolved. The protoplasm of the cells is nothing but water in which different molecules are dissolved and suspended. A watermelon has over 92% water. Most herbaceous plants have only about 10-15% to of its fresh weight as dry matter. Of course, distribution of water within a plant varies. Woody parts have relatively very little water, while soft parts mostly contain water. A seed may appear dry, but it still has water. Otherwise, it would not be alive and respiring. Terrestrial plants take up huge amount of water daily, but most of it is lost to the air through evaporation from the leaves which is termed as transpiration. Do you know that a mature corn plant absorbs almost 3 liters of water in a day, while a mustard plant absorbs water equal to its own weight in about 5 hours? Because of this high demand of water, it is not surprising that water is often the limiting factor for plant growth and productivity in both agricultural and natural environments. Water Potential To comprehend water-plant relations, we should need to know certain standard terms. Water potential is a concept fundamental to understanding water movement. Solute potential and pressure potential are the two main components that determine water potential. Water molecules possesses kinetic energy. The greater the concentration of water in a system, the greater is its kinetic energy of water potential. Hence, it is obvious that pure water will have the greatest water potential. If two systems containing water are in contact, random movement of water molecules will result in net movement of water molecules from the system with higher energy to the one with lower energy. Thus, water will move from the system containing water at higher water potential to the one having low water potential. This process of movement of substances down a gradient of free energy is called diffusion. Water potential is denoted by the Greek symbol xi and is expressed in pressure units such as pascals. By convention, the water potential of pure water at standard temperatures, which is not under any pressure, is taken to be zero. All solutions have a lower water potential than pure water. The magnitude of this lowering due to dissolution of a solute is called solute potential. Solute potential is always negative. The more the solute molecules, the lower is the solute potential. For a solution at atmospheric pressure, water potential is equal to solute potential. 
If a pressure greater than atmospheric pressure is applied to pure water or a solution, then its water potential increases. Pressure can build up in a plant system when water enters a plant cell due to diffusion causing a pressure build up against the cell wall. It makes the cell turgid. This increases the pressure potential. Pressure potential is usually positive, though in plants, negative potential or tension in the water column in the xylem plays a major role in water transport up a stem. Pressure potential is denoted as xi. Water potential of a cell is affected by both solute and pressure potential. The relationship between them is as follows. Osmosis The plant cell is surrounded by a cell membrane and a cell wall. The cell wall is freely permeable to water and substances in solution, hence there is not a barrier to movement. In plant cells, the cell membrane and the membrane of the vacuole, the tonoplast together are important determinants of movement of molecules in or out of the cell. Now let us know about osmosis. Osmosis is the term used to refer specifically to the diffusion of water across a differentially or semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis occurs spontaneously in response to a driving force. The net direction and rate of osmosis depends on both the pressure gradient and concentration gradient. Water will move from its region of higher chemical potential or concentration to its region of low chemical potential until equilibrium is reached. We can better understand it with the help of an experiment. Take a thistle funnel filled with sucrose solution and then keep it inverted in a beaker containing water. The solution of sucrose and water taken in a funnel is separated from pure water in a beaker through a semi-permeable membrane such as an egg membrane. Then what will happen? We will observe that water will diffuse across the membrane to raise the level of the solution in the funnel. This will continue till the equilibrium is reached. Now, we will apply some pressure to stop the water movement into the funnel. This pressure required to prevent water from diffusing is, in fact, the osmotic pressure and this is the function of the solute concentration. More the solute concentration, greater will be the pressure required to prevent water from diffusing in. Numerically, osmotic pressure is equivalent to the osmotic potential, but the sign is opposite. Osmotic pressure is the positive pressure applied, while osmotic potential is negative. Plasmolysis The behavior of the plant cells or tissues with regard to water movement depends on the surrounding solution. If the external solution balances the osmotic pressure of the cytoplasm, it is said to be isotonic. If the external solution is more dilute than the cytoplasm, it is hypotonic. And if the external solution is more concentrated, it is hypotonic. Cells swell in hypotonic solution and shrink in hypotonic ones. Plasmolysis occurs when water moves out of the cell and the cell membrane of a plant cell shrinks away from its cell wall. This occurs when the cell or tissue is placed in a solution that is hypertonic, has more solutes, to the protoplasm. Water moves out. It is first lost from the cytoplasm and then from the vacuole. The water when drawn out of the cell through diffusion into the extracellular outside cell fluid causes the protoplast to shrink away from the walls. The cell is said to be plasmolyzed. The movement of water occurred across the membrane moving from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential outside the cell. When the cell or tissue is placed in an isotonic solution, there is no net flow of water towards the inside or outside. If the external solution balances the osmotic pressure of the cytoplasm, it is said to be isotonic. When water flows into the cell and out of the cell and are in equilibrium, the cells are said to be flaccid. The process of palomolysis is usually reversible. When the cells are placed in an hypotonic solution, which means higher water potential or dilute solution as compared to the cytoplasm, water diffuses into the cell 
causing the cytoplasm to build up a pressure against the wall that is called turgor pressure. The pressure exerted by the protoplasts due to entry of water against the rigid wall is called pressure potential. Because of the rigidity of the cell wall, the cell does not rupture. This turgor pressure is ultimately responsible for enlargement and extension growth of cells. Imbibition Imbibition is a special type of diffusion when water is absorbed by solids, colloids, causing them to enormously increase in volume. The classical examples of imbibition are absorption of water by seeds and dry wood. Imbibition is also diffusion since water movement is a longer concentration gradient. The seeds and other such materials have almost no water, hence they absorb water easily. Water potential gradient between the absorbent and the liquid imbibed is essential for imbibition. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Over small distances, substances move by diffusion and by cytoplasmic streaming supplemented by active transport. Transport over longer distances proceeds through the vascular system and is called translocation. In rooted plants, transport in xylem is essentially unidirectional from roots to the stems. Organic and mineral nutrients, however, undergo multidirectional transport. In diffusion, molecules move in a random fashion, the net result being substances moving from region of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration. In facilitated diffusion, special proteins help move substances across membranes without expenditure of ATP energy. Active transport uses energy to pump molecules against a concentration gradient. It is carried out by membrane proteins. Water potential is denoted by the Greek symbol Xi and is expressed in pressure units such as pascals. Water potential of a cell is affected by both solute and pressure potential. The relationship between them is as follows. The diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane is known as osmosis. The net direction and rate of osmosis depends on both the pressure gradient and concentration gradient. If the external solution balances the osmotic pressure of the cytoplasm, it is said to be isotonic. If the external solution is more dilute than the cytoplasm, it is hypotonic. And if the external solution is more concentrated, it is hypertonic. Cells swell in hypotonic solutions and shrink in hypertonic ones. Plasmolysis occurs when water moves out of the cell and the cell membrane of a plant cell shrinks away from its cell wall. Imbibition is a special type of diffusion when water is absorbed by solids, colloids, causing them to enormously increase in volume.